Hello and welcome to Lexplosion's latest webinar in its special series on the evolving COVID-19 scenario in India and its regulatory impact on businesses. But before we continue, here is a quick reminder that those who have been in lockdown since the Janta curfew on March 22nd will be completing four weeks of working from home this week. For others like us who had imposed work from home a few days in advance, we have already completed a month. We would like to take this opportunity to thank all our clients, partners, and others who have cooperated with us during this period, while also keeping us on our toes with regular questions, inputs, and feedback. We assure you of our complete support throughout this period of lockdown and beyond. Today, we will focus on the order passed by the Ministry of Home Affairs last Wednesday, reiterating the Prime Minister's announcement that the nationwide lockdown will extend till May 3rd. Since the order was passed on April 15th, we are calling it MHA 15. As most of you have already read in our earlier updates on this subject, MHA 15 provides a series of additional exemptions which will allow a number of businesses to start operating from as early as coming Monday, that is April 20th, subject to them fulfilling a number of conditions. Before going into the details, a few words of caution. First, MHA 15 clearly states that individual states are to strictly enforce the order but are allowed to impose stricter measures than what has been laid down. States such as Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan have already acted on the basis of MHA 15 and issued amendments to their earlier state orders. In the process, they have made some interesting deviations from the MHA 15 order. We will be spending a few minutes on the Maharashtra order in one of the later sections. Secondly, MHA 15 clarifies that none of the exemptions that have been provided will apply to containment zones within hotspots as demarcated by states, union territories and district administrations basis guidelines that were issued last month by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Later on Wednesday, that is the same day as the MHA 15 order, the Secretary of, of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare released a list of list categorizing districts in India into four. The first had two parts to it, hotspot districts with large outbreaks and hotspot districts with clusters, collectively called the red zone and covering 170 districts across the country. Secondly, non-hotspot dis districts with clusters, there are 207 of them at the moment. And finally, non-infected districts or green zones. It has been clarified that a district currently in the red zone will convert to green if there are no new reported cases in 28 days. The purpose of making these points uh, is to explain that you should take into consideration any order that has been issued by your state or district administration to decide whether you and your industry is now permitted to operate wholly or partially from April 28th. 20th. You also need to consider if your business or a part of it is within any area identified as a containment zone. Similarly, while deciding which employees can be considered to come to work, among other considerations that we'll deal with later, you do need to check if the person resides in a containment zone. With this, let us move to the agenda for today and a brief introduction of the speakers. We have broken today's webinar session into four parts. We will start by giving you an overview of the commercial aspects that will continue to remain under lockdown till at least the 3rd of May. We will then move on to a summary of the exemptions that have been provided to some key industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, e-commerce, IT and IT enabled services and the financial sector. In the next section, we'll be covering the do's and don'ts that have been laid down in the standard operating procedures or SOPs that are a part of the MHA 15 order. And we'll end today's session by responding to a number of questions that we have received from our clients after the MHA 15 order. We believe these responses will help guide business decisions for all of you attending this meeting. The speakers for today are Agnishwar Banerjee, who heads Lexplosion in the West, Antara Dasgupta, who heads operations in Lexplosion, and Zaheer Taravdar, who heads solutioning in Lexplosion. Agnishwar, Antara and Zaheer are all lawyers and each bring around 15 years of experience to this discussion. And I am Indranil, the CEO of Lexplosion and I'm also a lawyer. Uh, without any further ado, I'll hand over to Agnishwar to take us through the next section, which is on what will remain locked down even after this order, at least till May 3rd. Over to you, Agnishwar. 
Thanks, Indranil, and a very good afternoon to all of you who joined us on this uh, weekend Friday. So let me walk you through the first section, which deals with what remains locked down. Now, while MHA 15 has understandably received a lot of media attention for the new exemptions that it has provided, before uh, walking you through these exemptions, let us take a quick look at what continues to remain locked down, at least till the 3rd of May. So right off the bat, all domestic and international modes of transport for public will remain unavailable. This includes flights, trains, metros, buses, taxis, cab apps, uh, auto and cycle rickshaws also. So all forms of transport grounded till the foreseeable future. Movement of people between states and even districts will continue to be prohibited. However, it has been clarified that this will not be the case for medical reasons. So medical reasons are the only exemption for moving between state borders. Uh, as well as for other activities permitted under MHA 15. We interpret this to mean that if, for example, a business operating in Gurgaon, which is in Haryana, is otherwise allowed to operate, its employees will be able to come from Delhi or from Noida, which is in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, and after that, all educational institutions, including coaching classes, will remain closed. As a matter of fact, MHA 15 encourages all educational institutions to pursue online teaching. Uh, all cinema halls, malls, shopping complexes, gymnasiums, uh, entertainment parks, and such like will continue to remain shut. The same is the case with social, political, and religious gatherings. All religious places of worship also remain uh, locked down during this period. While it is difficult to say for sure which of these activities may be allowed post 3rd of May, it is fairly clear that the government will reintroduce some of these in a staggered manner over the next few weeks and months. Apart from this, as mentioned earlier, containment zones within various hotspots will remain out of bounds for all exempted economic activities. The Home Secretary in a subsequent clarification has stated that if any area is subsequently identified as a containment zone, then all the exempted economic activities will be suspended immediately. The same document also states that the exemptions that have been provided under MHA 15 uh, will be withdrawn immediately if any of the lockdown procedures are violated. So while containment, uh, non-containment zones may be allowed to operate in the near term, they are under a strict watch and any day could revert back to in a lockdown position if there's violation of the uh, provisions of the lockdown or if it has been subsequently declared a containment zone. With this, I'll ask Indranil to carry us through the next section on the fresh exemptions that MHA 15 provides. Thanks, Sebi. Uh, what is most noteworthy about the series of exemptions that form the cornerstone of MHA 15 is the diversity of sectors which have been given some leeway, subject, of course, to them strictly following the social distancing, hygiene, and transportation norms that have been laid down in the SOP. Uh, which we'll come to in, a, in one of the subsequent sections. The area which is likely to see the greatest change post the partial easing of the lockdown from April 20th is with regard to the movement of goods. MHA 15 clarifies that all goods traffic will be allowed to ply. There is no reference to the goods having to be a part of essential services. The order further clarifies that railways, airports, and seaports will transport goods, parcels, cargo, cargo, relief, and evacuation material. In a huge relief to that sector, seaports operations will include authorized customs clearing and forwarding agents. Operations of land ports have been largely restricted to cross land border transportation of essential goods such as food products, medical supplies, petroleum, and LPG. Movement of all trucks and other goods and carrier vehicles with up to two drivers and a helper has been permitted. In a clear attempt to avoid harassment of drivers of empty trucks returning after delivery, this has been specifically permitted. Truck repair shops and dhavas will also be allowed to remain open, but only if they follow strict social distancing norms. When we read, read this in conjunction with the fact that e-commerce companies, courier services, cold storage, and warehousing services, as well as all links to the logistics chain have been allowed to operate fully, it is evident that the government is keen on allowing at least an important cog in the economic wheel to get back on track. Similarly, all facilities in the supply chain of essential goods, uh, that is in the manufacturing, wholesale, and retail side, have been allowed to operate. 
it has been clarified that it does not matter whether the activity supports the supply chain of retail goods through local stores e-commerce companies or large brick and mortar units so essentially uh, we can we can assume that almost all parts of the supply chain at least as far as the essential goods are concerned will now be coming back uh, into almost full action uh, after monday healthcare for obvious remain uh, obvious reasons remains largely exempted from the lockdown be it hospitals laboratories dispensaries manufacturers of drugs and pharmaceuticals and even manufacturers of medical devices even telemedicine facilities have also been exempted from the lockdown guidelines interestingly even the manufacturing of raw materials and intermediaries of drugs pharmaceuticals and medical devices have also been exempted so if any of you are involved in the manufacturing of any of the intermediaries or raw materials of the products mentioned then you are also now going to be exempted under uh, this new order of of the ministry of home affairs staying on with manufacturing there have been a number of exam uh, exemptions provided to the sector apart from the specific manufacturing activities that have been exempted for being a part of essential services all industries and food processing operating units operating in rural areas uh, which has been clarified to be everything outside of municipal limits shall be allowed to operate from monday similarly industries operating out of secs eous industrial estates and industrial townships have been permitted to operate as long as they have uh, access control production units which require continuous process have also been allowed to operate as have been those manufacturing it hardware and packaging material on continuous process two points one some states for example uttar pradesh has now come up with a list of industries which are a part of the continuous process and earlier there was a 1992 order which had an annexure which had a list of continuous processes uh, we are still trying to verify whether that list is a valid list for all of you to uh, to refer to uh, but in the absence of that do look out for your individual states list of continuous processes like i said uttar pradesh has al already come up with one uh, oil and gas exploration and refinery coal production mines and mineral production their transportation and acti activities incidental to it have also been permitted when it comes to the financial sector apart from bank branches and atms it vendors for banking operations banking correspondents atm operations and cash management agencies have also been permitted to operate additionally rbi regulated financial markets payment system operators standalone primary dealers insurance companies and semi notified capital and debt market services have been exempted from the lockdown another sector which is likely to benefit significantly from the mha 15 order is the information technology as well as information technology enabled services this has been wholly exempted with the caveat that they can operate with up to 50% of their staff a number of outsourcing companies which support essential services in other countries had been struggling to operate because of this lockdown this exemption subject to respective states also extending it should help these businesses print and electronic media including broadcasting dth and cable services continue to remain largely exempted from the lockdown as are public utilities such as utilities such as oil and gas generation transmission and distribution of power telecommunications and internet services private security agencies as well as facility management services for maintenance of office and residential complexes have also now been exempted Uh, this will definitely help especially with uh, offices which are likely to open from the 20th uh, this will definitely help uh, uh, them operate better because as we'll see in during when we discuss about the sops there is a significant requirement to maintain security and provide facility management uh, once these offices start functioning uh, while strict social distancing norms are mandated uh, in you know both the print media as well as with regard to private security agencies we are a little concerned about how easy it will be to maintain social distancing for this group of people a similar challenge is likely to be faced with the construction industry which has also been opened up almost entirely in the rural se sector as well as for projects inside industrial estates construction of renewable energy projects have also been allowed so people in the wind solar and other such sectors uh, will it's a huge relief for them there are a number of other activities relating to agriculture construction and public utilities which have been permitted agriculture appears to to have opened up almost entirely with operations being opened up for farmers procurement agencies mandis at central and state level 
Further, agricultural machinery and spare parts have been exempted along with fish, fisheries, plantation, and animal husbandry. In the, interestingly, and what should be a huge benefit for millions of people stuck at home, self-employed people such as electricians, plumbers, carpenters, and motor mechanics will, will be able to operate from Monday, subject to them following the standard operating procedures laid down in MHA 15, uh, which is what Agnishwar will walk us through in the next section. Interestingly, what constitutes self-employed uh, is still a little up in the air. There have been some examples cited, but it's not clear whether other people who are self-employed can also expect the same exemption to work for them. I'm aware of a letter which has been sent by a lawyer's association in one of the states uh, requesting them to be also given the same exemption considering that they're self-employed. Uh, it will be an area which will which will need some clarity and we are not absolutely sure how that will, how it will pan out. Before we move to the SOP section, which will be taken uh, up by Agnishwar, uh, I'd like to reiterate again that while these relaxations have been extended to all these sectors through MHA 15, strict compliance with prescribed SOPs on, on social distancing, hygiene, transportation is to be maintained at all times. Uh, failing to maintain these standards will lead to fines and penal prosecution on the company and its employees, including, manage, uh, including its management under the Disaster Management Act. Before ending this session, section, here is a look at a couple of key differences between the MHA 15 order and the subsequent order passed by the Maharashtra government. As mentioned during the introductory uh, discussion, the individual state nuances need to be taken into account by businesses before taking a call on whether and to what extent they can operate from April 20th. One of the main areas of difference between the MHA 15 order and the Maharashtra order is with regard to IT-ITS operations. As we have seen, the MHA order states that the IT-ITS can operate from Monday, but with 50% staff. However, Maharashtra has allowed IT-ITS only for essential services, that too with a request to work from home. As explained already, the MHA order clarifies that states can pass their own orders to operationalize this as long as the state order is more stringent than the MHA one. To that extent, businesses operating in Maharashtra will have to pay heed to the state order on IT-ITS operations. The other aspect is more interesting. If you recall, certain financial services operations have been allowed by the MHA 15 order. However, this does not include non-banking financial companies. In a surprising move, the Maharashtra order allows NP NBFCs to operate. Now, this is actually in our mind uh, a dilution of the MHA 15 order, something that states are not allowed to do. Uh, Maharashtra, specifically Mumbai, as we all know, is a hub for NBFC. So Maharashtra's move is understandable. However, how the center reacts to it will be crucial in other states determining what kind of flexibility they have while dealing with this latest order. Uh, with this, we will discuss the SOPs as laid down in MHA 15 and I'll hand it back to AB uh, to, to take us through that section. Over to you, AB. Right. So, um, as you may have realized that a number of businesses and sectors are being allowed to operate post the 20th of April under varying degrees of restrictions. However, uh, one condition, which is like a blanket condition for such uh, operations from the 20th, is that there has to be strict compliance with the prescribed SOPs under the MHA 15 order. So let me quickly walk you through what these deal with. So while the businesses can start from Monday, the standard SOP procedures have been laid down to make it difficult to start so soon. So as a matter of fact, considering that the tough penal provisions under the Disaster Management Act will be imposed on those failing to comply with the order fully, it might be advisable to first ensure compliance with the standards of the SOP and then perhaps to begin your business operations, even if that uh, adds a couple of days to the lockdown. Further, considering that the SOPs are extremely detailed and likely to continue beyond the period of lockdown, we strongly recommend all businesses to be conversant with the various requirements and start making plans to implement these for the longer term as well, not just till May 3rd. To start with, uh, what these SOPs uh, uh, prescribe, MHA 15 makes it mandatory for all people to wear face covers at all times in the workplaces. Secondly, adequate arrangements for temperature screening as well as thermal screening of any person entering and exiting the workplace has to be done. So this applies to both people entering and exiting. 
uh, then they go on to suggest that a minimum distance of six feet has to be maintained at all times between any two workers. This includes uh, workers assembling in meeting rooms, training areas, canteens, or common areas. Uh, large meetings of more than 10 people have been strictly prohibited under all circumstances. Then in workplaces, both offices and factories, they will have to now ensure a gap of one hour between shifts. Also, they will have to stagger lunch breaks of staff to ensure social distancing. So gone are the days of everybody eating lunch together. Interestingly, employers have been asked to encourage people above the age of 65, persons with comorbidities and, with, uh, and parents with children below the age of five to work from home. So people above the age of 65 and parents with children below five are being encouraged to stay at home. What is not clear is what will be considered adequate encouragement and what the employer's liability will be if some such person does decide to come to work despite being encouraged not to. It's also going to be difficult for large companies to get the details of persons with comorbidities in quick time. And once they do, they will have to deal with a, a huge amount of health data with utmost care. And it should ensure that it does not violate any of the provisions of the uh, Data Protection or Internet, uh, Information Technology Act. Uh, one more issue that could come up is the encouragement of employees to use the recently launched Arogya Setu app. Uh, which is supposed to help in contact tracing. Yet again, we are not sure about what constitutes encouragement and what kind of liability will be cast on an employer whose employee is found to have not downloaded the app. The situation can be further complicated if such an employee actually ends up testing positive for COVID-19. When it comes to matter of hygiene, it has been mandated that hand wash or hand sanitizers, preferably of the touch-free variety, are provided at all entry exit points as well as common areas. Organizations will have to sanitize their workplace between shifts. For factories, it has been additionally mandated that they clean all common surfaces frequently. It also goes on to mandate that factories that organize intensive communication and training on good hygiene practices to all its uh, employees and workers. Employees have also been asked to disinfect building entrances, office gates, lifts, washrooms, walls, and other surfaces. All vehicle and machinery entering the premises will have to be disinfected before they can enter and exit. Lifts and hoists should not have more than two to four people depending on their size. It is not clarified uh, what size is prescribed here. This can be a potential problem for employers working out of shared facilities. As, uh, for example, the lifts, washrooms are shared between multiple offices on the same floor. What if the building owner does not prevent more than four people from entering the elevator? What can they do to ensure this? So these are some questions that need to be answered immediately before people can resume uh, office work. Considering that the lockdown is still ongoing and public transport is off the road, it has been mandated that the employers have to provide for a special transport facility for all employees who are going to work. They will have to maintain social distancing by ensuring that the vehicles being used do not have more than 30 to 40 percent occupancy. So in most four-seater cars, this is probably one person per car. What is not clear is whether employees will be falling foul of this order if their employees with their personal vehicles come to office on their own. Will the employer's responsibility to ensure that the employee is not taking more than one or two people in the vehicle while coming to work? And how will they ensure this? So these are some questions that need to be answered in the short term. Apart from this, social distancing, hygiene, and transport-related issues, another major requirement for the SOP, uh, which could possibly be a major roadblock for uh, small and medium enterprises, is the compulsory requirement of medical insurance to be provided to all workers. Apart from the costs involved, many small enterprises cannot find insurance companies who are willing to provide them with good medical insurance. However, with the insurance companies also receiving business from the printed, this might change. With this, we have come to the end of our presentation sections. We will now be addressing some of the questions that uh, all of you have raised and which we've received over the past couple of days. And for this, I call upon my colleagues Zaheer and Antara to take us through the next section. Thank you, Indranil and Agneshwar. 
that was indeed an insightful and captivating one and we are hopeful that each of you listening in today are finding this session as interesting as we are while we were preparing for it as already mentioned by indrani zahir and i will be taking up the faq segment i would like to give a slight background here as most of you are aware our project managers and relationship managers had touched base with most of you to know if you had any questions on the mha 15 and we have received questions from many of you thank you for sparing time and sharing the questions with us we truly appreciate it after uh, as far as addressing and the questions are concerned what we essentially have done is bucketized common questions together for the ease of responding and of course to avoid duplication with this let's move on to the first question uh, that we had received the first question now that the government is allowing a small percentage of the workforce to be deployed many of them cannot be deployed to ensure social distancing at workplace for those who we cannot offer work can they be considered as laid off also while bringing back people shall we be required to follow any seniority for the above category if they are not laid off can we treat them as no work no pay principle can we offer workers contractual casual any minimum wage for the period of lockdown as most of you of notifications relating to payment are advisory in nature what will be the legal position if not complied with well we would like to mention here that the advisory dated 20th march 2020 issued by the ministry of labor and employment urging employers not to terminate employees during this pandemic as it would not only deepen their crisis but also weaken their morale was not issued pursuant to powers given under any enactment however the subsequent order dated 29th march 2020 from the ministry of home affairs invoking its powers under the disaster management act is a mandatory order directing all employers be it industries shops or commercial establishments to make payment of wages to all their workers on the due date without any deductions for the period their establishment is closed owing to lockdown and that order clearly mentions that any violation of the order would attract stringent penalty under the disaster management act subsequent to the 29th march order by the ministry of home affairs Uh, we have noticed many states such as tamil nadu chandigarh andhra pradesh and goa to name a few coming out with orders and notifications directing all employers in the industries or in shops and commercial establishments to pay wages to their workers on time without making any deductions for the period their establishments are closed during the lockdown uh, as all of you will be knowing all these orders and notifications have been issued under the epidemic diseases act or the disaster management act therefore mandatory in nature in response to your question under the current circumstances whether the earlier mandatory orders have not been withdrawn we do not think that the conditions of social distancing closure etc imposed by the orders resulting in employers not being able to utilize the workers would entitle employers to lay off the employees to your question on whether you need to start taking senior people in first in line in terms of priority there is nothing in the order specifying that needless to add all employees whether being taken into work or not will have to be paid with no deduction and cannot be terminated uh, with regard to offering the contract workers minimum wages uh, please note that the orders cover contract workers within its purview and these orders require the payments to be made without any deduction an important point that we would like to emphasize here is that the disaster management act has an overriding effect over any and all acts which are inconsistent with it with this i would request uh, antara, uh, antara, if you if you don't mind i just wanted to intervene on this uh, because we are talking about uh, uh, aspects of laying off uh, there ha- are individual states which have come up with their respective orders as well with regard to uh, termination with regard to uh, payment of salary some of those orders have even subsequently been amended or even withdrawn as in the case of karnataka so my request to the uh, to the audience would be to go back and check for their respective states or reach out to us and we can assist you with this but be sure about the position in your state before you take a final call on any of these matters uh, thanks indranil uh, that was helpful for sure uh, i would request zahir to move on to the question 2 
Thank you, Antara. Thanks, Sundaranil and AB for taking us up to this point. Uh, moving on with the discussion. The second question which we received was, what happens to sales teams of businesses which are being allowed to operate? Now, can they start going out to do sales meetings with different prospects? It's an important question for most organizations which have been permitted to operate during the lockdown period. While the MHA order have exempted a number of business activities wholly or partially and have allowed them to operate subject to various conditions. However, it does not clarify whether such activities connected or ancillary to the approved activities will be permitted as well. Therefore, on plain reading of the MHA order, it is not clear or not uh, whether the sales team of such businesses will be allowed to go out for a meeting. It is one of the in one of the clarifications we are trying to it is one of the clarifications. In fact, we are trying to get from the MHA and will update you as soon as we receive uh, it from them. While there isn't full clarity at this moment, some related points are interesting to note and we thought uh, we would discuss those. Now, given that public transport is not available currently for commuting, the question is how does the sales team travel for meetings? Especially since private vehicles are not allowed in case, are only allowed in fact, in case of emergencies, including medical or veterinary care and for procuring essential goods. If the organization makes the arrangement for the transportation of the employees, then, then also there is a requirement that the vehicle has to operate only up to 30 or 40% of the its passenger capacity. The organizations will also be required to be fully compliant with the other requirements stated under the MHA order given specifically under annexures one and two, such as the organizations will have to make, make sure that the vehicle is disinfected with spray, people are wearing masks all the time, etc. Antara, over to you to answer the next question, please. Uh, before, before we move to Antara, yeah. uh, just I had a quick point to make. Uh, yes, I sir. think uh, while uh, you are absolutely correct that there is uh, no clarity on whether sales uh, staff will be able to uh, work, uh, it's uh, uh, considering that there is no specific restriction, the, the general reading could be that they will be allowed to work. Uh, the public transport aspect of it makes it tricky. Uh, it would be recommended. So again, while it is not clear what kind of permits uh, approvals will be required for all the employees who will now be allowed to uh, go back to work. Uh, it would be recommended in our view that you provide some kind of a uh, clarificatory letter which the salesperson can carry, uh, uh, specifically mentioning the date, ideally also the place that the person is allowed to go, so that they don't face any uh, you know, harassment from the administration when they are actually attending work which has been, uh, uh, which their organization has sent them for. So this would be our additional recommendation. It is not uh, clearly laid down anywhere in, in the MHA order or anything that we have read about that since then. But uh, I thought it's relevant to mention it here because it will otherwise uh, be a difficult situation that a salesperson might land up in, especially if they're traveling uh, on their own in a private vehicle, be it a four wheeler or a two wheeler. If they're stopped on the road uh, to justify uh, their presence on the road might not be easy in the current times. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I'm sorry for intervention. Uh, I pass it back to Antara to take on the next question. Yes, thank you, uh, Indranil. Uh, so the next question which we received is uh, an interesting question. Uh, as the government has allowed construction activities for movement of goods and its distribution, will we require some office employees as well as to operate? And if the office is falling in a restricted zone, can we seek exemption? Uh, as for the Maharashtra order dated 15th, all activities including construction activities have been prohibited in containment zones or hotspots. So as you can see on your screens for the ease of reference, we have defined what a hotspot is. So hotspots essentially are areas of large COVID outbreaks or clusters with significant spread of COVID-19 determined as per the Ministry of Health guidelines. And in these hotspots, containment zones will be demarcated by states and union territories as per the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health. 
so the response to your question would be that there is nothing in the mha 15 order which allows any process for seeking exemption from any of the provisions of the lockdown including in relation to restricted zones as a matter of fact antara oh. as a matter of fact antara the way the whole uh, construct of the mha 15 order as well as uh, a couple of uh, uh, orders that we have seen since then one from the ministry of health and family welfare with regard to the list of hotspots across the country and the other as a addendum or rather a introduction to the mha 15 order from the home secretary it is uh, abundantly clear that any kind of business operations except the few things like allowing essential services to reach those places will actually not be allowed there will be uh, you know very strict perimeter control which will be put in place for these areas additionally uh, beyond what is already there so it is unlikely that it will be possible to uh, get an approval for uh, you know one can of course try but it is unlikely that they will get an approval for conducting any business operations out of a restricted zone uh, at least till the 3rd of may and probably for some more time beyond that so wanted to make the clarification uh, back to you um true that is a very vital point and that is important and that's the whole purpose that we are trying to solve uh, globally that if operations are allowed in restricted zone the whole purpose would be defeated so i'm sure in that was that was important to mention uh, i'll request zahid to move on to the next one uh, thank you now the next one is uh, important in order of roti kapda and makan it starts with roti so valid questions absolutely what we don't have a canteen in our premises can we order through zomago zomato swiggy and the likes now to answer that uh, mha order has allowed e-commerce entities to operate which means intermediaries like of uh, zomato swiggy food panda etc will be allowed to ply on roads to make a uh, delivery uh, of food items which have been considered as essential now therefore while working from exempted establishments or units which have been ordered to op start operations from 20th april you can place order online for food items and get it delivered for a matter of fact mh order has in fact encouraged doorstep deliveries by e-commerce entities and it is interesting to note here that uh, under the mh order restaurants are not covered under the exempted ex uh, category of business therefore uh, you might face problems in finding restaurants to do, to order from however uh, as an organization providing organizing food for the employees uh, following points will have to be kept in mind now starting with you will have to stagger the food order or the serving of the food or lunch breaks of employees to ensure social distancing MHA order states that no more than 5 people shall be allowed to gather and with a minimum of 6 feet distance between them which AB talked about earlier uh lastly but not uh, least important is you will have to ensure hygiene requirements these are the things uh, which are uh, we think is relevant to in uh, was in answering this question for you and 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 there are you know specific uh, while Uh, if, uh, while there is no specific ref reference to not having a canteen the the point zahir makes becomes particularly relevant because there is a specific reference to social distancing even within canteen so if you do have a canteen you need to make sure that there is a 6 feet di uh, distance between people sitting in a canteen there are specific references as zahir pointed out to staggered lunch breaks so if you are ordering yeah. food and if you have let's say 100 people in a in an office if you order food for all of them at the same time considering that not more than 5 people can gather considering that there has to be a 6 foot distance between them considering that unlike in the ordinary course they will not be able to have the food sitting in a open area in a group it is probably you know it probably makes sense to stagger out the orders uh, and make sure that 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 they are being delivered at the time when the person will actually be getting the break to have lunch uh, uh, since zahir mentioned about roti kapra and makan uh, one important point relevant particularly for uh, you know uh, people running large operations 
there is a complete ban on smoking gutka and alcohol uh, under this order so at least till right. the 3rd of may there is a complete ban so if your employees are coming to office and then stepping out of the office for any kind of a break like for a smoke break or to have some gutka i'm assuming that nobody will actually be stepping out of office to have alcohol but uh, all of these have been completely banned so it's not even a ban around the office they're completely banned as is spitting so as responsible employers my our recommendation would be to keep these in mind so that you know if employees are saying that they're stepping out for smoking if they're saying that they're stepping out to uh, you know to have a cup of tea uh, that you 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 you, uh, you know advise them not to because it is clearly banned under the mha 15 order and as uh, employers as people running organizations your obligations including penal consequences are under the disaster management act which are far more stringent than under normal laws so do keep that in mind uh, uh, this is beyond obviously the question on swiggy zomato which is of course an extremely valid question uh, but i wanted to make the point to make sure that people are fully ready when when they get to work uh, if they decide to start working any time in the next few days back to you zahir yeah yeah thanks indranil absolutely valid point people need to keep these things in mind before they start operating from 20th april onward with that uh, i pass it on back to uh, antara to take up the next question please yeah another question that we received is uh, provide us clarity on use of mask is it mandatory non mandatory company provided or employee procured so essentially uh, there are two aspects to this question that whether the requirement is mandatory and whether the company needs to bear the cost for masks or employees have to on their own uh, procure it so uh, wearing a mask amidst the covid scenario is most certainly a precautionary step a step obviously in the right direction in one's own interest uh, to protect one's own health it should definitely be worn to your question from a legal perspective as far as the mha 15 order is concerned many and many states such as assam delhi and west bengal what we have noticed is that uh, states have made it mandatory in any public place that you need to wear mask uh, and you are required to wear the mask mandatorily in offices as well offices and public places have been clubbed together in the mha work uh, office uh, order uh, some of us uh, uh, go as go for, some of the orders go as far as saying that it should be a three ply mask so they specify what kind of a mask it should be however none of these uh, orders are clearly specifying whether the employer needs to pay for it or the employee needs to get it on his own accord so that is something which you would have to take an internal decision and but antara uh, yeah antara if i may interject yeah. on this just wanted to add that you know considering that the employee is traveling for the purposes of work and that this requirement is there for in connection with that like any other safety equipment which is required for work is provided by the employer i would think that this would also be something that the employer should pay for even though i i, I understand it's not been provided for so clearly so precisely siddharth and just to add to your point imagine at this moment when there is no public transport you actually organize for the employee to come all the way to office in in some form of transport keeping all the social distancing requirements and then you find that the person does not have a mask now or or some kind of a facial cover which is essentially what is required uh, it would be rather uh, you know uh, strange if you allow that person to then uh, go back all the way because they did not have a mask it would make more strange uh, make more uh, you know sense if you kept some kind of a provision to have uh, you know a, a facial cover for the people uh, which like antara mentioned is mandatory within workplaces so that as if they come to office without a facial cover they they do not have to get back home without actually being able to work through the day so that would be you know logically would make more sense if you kept that provision even if you did not compulsively provide or if you did not pay for every employee if an employee comes to office without a, a, a mask you should definitely have a provision for them to be able to cover their face for the time that they are working uh, and yeah, thanks and for the interview Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Siddharth and Indranil. So, what we've also noticed in these orders is specifically employers have been asked to ensure that their employees are wearing masks. So, as you know, ensuring again has a very wide connotation. 
and in the interest of the organization as a whole it will always be good to uh, ensure or provide or make sure that employees are wearing masks as they enter the office premises as well so definitely a mandatory recommendation from our side uh, zaheer uh, you could move on to question 6 thanks amtra uh, now moving on with the next question uh, the question is about the operating hours of exempted shops or establishment now specifically the question asked us whether uh, one can operate beyond the erstwhile legal limits but to answer this now first we need to focus on essential uh, establishments and factories which deal with essential goods now facilities in the supply of essential goods involving all types of activities like manufacturing wholesale retail either through local stores or e-commerce platforms or large brick and mortar stores everything every activity has been exempted to operate under this mha order also there has been no restriction at all which has been put in terms of the opening and closing hours of such establishments but the social distancing norms has to be strictly adhered to now for other exempted facilities uh, not getting covered above basically not dealing with essential goods the mha order is silent on the working hours now in the absence of any specific provision on the opening and closing hours of uh, the establishment or factory it would be rather safe to assume that the timing of the operations of such exempted facility will be as per the existing laws uh, unless of course the states the concerned states union territory or the district authorities empowered to do so issues any orders or guidelines stating uh, like prescribing a timing of for opening and closing of uh, such establishments or industries till that time and, uh, this is what it is yes indran and, and there are uh, you know uh, at least for specific segments within the industries which have been already allowed to operate before this mha 15 order there are state specific restrictions on their timing for example uh you know retail outlets in most states have limited time zones within which they can operate same with mandis same with you know uh, you know flower and sweet shop sweet markets in places where they have been allowed so it is uh, it would be advisable to look at the uh, the 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 state uh, orders for your respective states before taking a final uh, call on what the current operating hours would be there is nothing specific as he mentioned in the mha 15 order with regard to the uh, uh, you know operating hours of uh, exempted shops and establishments but and and that would obviously uh, make us believe that the 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 general rules that apply to these uh, organizations in the ordinary course will apply uh, but do look at your state orders the other thing that i would like to mention and something that we had pointed out in the earlier portion of the presentation is that in, as part the as, as far as the sops are concerned there is a requirement to stagger out the employees and to have at least a one hour break between two shifts uh, that time to be used for the purposes of sanitization of the space so when you when you are looking at working hours considering that there has to be a, a gap of at least one hour between shifts unlike in the past when one shift could end and another set of people could walk in do keep that in mind both for the purposes of this response as well as for planning your overall working hours including of of getting employees to work because it will all become relevant in the context of uh, how this whole operation will have to happen at least till the 3rd of may for those of you are planning to start between now and then over to you zahi yeah yeah thanks intranil uh antara you can now take on the next question please yeah uh, the next question that we received is uh, needed clarifications on the post uh, 20th april relaxation which it seems includes allowing it its staff to operate on rotational basis can you confirm if this is only applicable to the it its organizations or does this have broader allowances to the it staff in other sectors too uh, responding to your question we would like to uh, mention that as per the mha 15 order commercial and private establishments in the it and it enabled services sector have been permitted to operate with up to 50% strength subject to the social distancing norms since this question was asked by our clients operating in mumbai 
please note that the maharashtra has a more restrictive requirement here that is that the it ips establishments only in the essential services have been permitted to operate in the state uh, they had an opportunity to bring the requirement in line with the mha central order but they have not done so uh, the same for it its while they have done it for many other industries so essentially there are no specific exclusions we have observed to it staff in any other sectors for it staff in any other sectors to be excluded uh, it would necessarily be required to be specifically excluded in the order as well just like while allowing the banks and the branches and the atms to function the order specifically allows it vendors for banking operations to operate so to us by and large it uh, staff in other sectors would be covered uh, if indranil and siddharth would like to give uh, more insight into that i would appreciate that as well yes and because the question i think is whether it its staff can operate on a rotational basis uh, uh, two aspects to it uh, since 50% of the employees in it its organizations are allowed to operate one strategy could be and something that some states had anyway started uh, advising uh, uh, sectors like banking sectors to do uh, prior to the lockdown was to have people uh, alternate so to have one set of people work Uh, on on two or three days of the week and the other set uh, to work on the other two or three days if you are planning to work and like with, with many of the it its sectors if you plan if you work in shifts do keep in mind that there is this additional requirement of maintaining uh, a one hour gap between shifts uh, do keep that in mind when planning for this uh, for, for your it its operations because otherwise uh, you might fall foul of the law so, so that's the only addition that i would like to make Uh, we can move on to the next question sahib yes antra thank you the next question is now do the exempted categories of establishments and factories like including manufacturing need to take any sort of a specific approval as one example has been cited also like a collector's approval before commencing operations uh, during this lockdown period now we have uh, gone through the mha order which states that the exempted establishment industries will be required to implement directives and processes as laid down in annexure 1 and annexure 2 before initiating the operations from 20th april mha order further provides that the states and union territories and the district authorities before operating the relaxations will ensure that all preparatory arrangements ensuring social distancing in the workplaces for the exempted activities are in place now msa order does not specifically state that there is a requirement to obtain separate approval before initiating the operations by the exempted establishments which are allowed to function in this gap now uh, uh, therefore it Uh, we can say that unless the state or union territories district authorizes issue or issue an order specifically requiring organizations to seek, seek prior permission uh, the mha or msa or mha order does not do so now for example uh, can consider this one the government of maharashtra has already issued an order dated uh, 15th april which is in line with the mha order and it extends the earlier state lockdown orders till 3rd of may now it has also issued an addendum to the guidelines of lockdown notification which was which came out from the maharashtra government on 25th of march now due to, under this order the maharashtra government does require seeking separate permission or approval before initiating activity from 20th may for the exempted establishment industry for maharashtra therefore we have a clearer picture but for other states till such time any order comes up with the uh, from the state government or the union territory government the mha order per se does not requires any such prior permission to be taken from any authority for running of operations yeah and uh, just to clarify again do look at your respective state orders Uh, with regard to any approvals that you might require there are uh, e passes uh, which are being required in some places for movement 
so if you're planning to, and that's something that especially uh, e-commerce companies have been struggling with because of the number of passes that were being issued in, in, in several of the states, which, which restricted their ability to operate fully. Uh, we are assuming that after the MHA 15 order, there will be a, a significant improvement in that situation with regard to movement of people. But there are state-specific requirements on e-passes and things like that. So do consider these, do check with your local administration before taking a call. Like Zaheer mentioned, uh, there is nothing specific to uh, specific in the MHA 15 order, uh, which talks about a requirement of an, a, an approval. But on the other hand, it does, you know, uh, pass on the major responsibility of implementing the order to the state and district administration. So there is definitely a possibility of individual states coming up with their respective orders. This weekend will be crucial because uh, as uh, uh, as we already know, there is an amendment to the MHA order which has already come and, and I will talk about it briefly towards the end. Uh, but, uh, you know, there might be more amendments both from the MHA as well as from individual states uh, to suit this order to their respective state requirements. So do keep an eye out and, and do plan well, as we have already mentioned a few times over, do plan well before you actually start working. Because even if there is nothing specific which requires you to take an approval, if any of the steps that were that are recommended or that are rather mandated in the SOP are not taken, and if you suddenly start operating, it will be completely the prerogative of the, uh, the district administration to come across and stop you from working. And what the uh, subsequent uh, uh, MHA uh, clarification, of the, the clarification with the Home Secretary states is that if somebody is found to be violating the order uh, uh, in, in, in letter or spirit, they can be immediately stopped from continuing with whatever activities they were otherwise permitted to continue. So do keep that in mind before you take any steps. Sorry, back to you, Zaheer. Thanks, Infernal. Uh, Antara, yeah. you can now take so, on the next question. Yeah. Yeah. So the next question that we had got is the MHA order in some parts permit IT and ITS enable services with up to 50% strength to work and also allows operations of tea, coffee and rubber plantations with maximum 50% workers and processing, packaging, sale again with another 50% of workers to continue. The question is does 50% workforce permit include contract workers or only on roll employees? Uh, well, the MHA 15 uh, does not clearly specify whether workers in this context connote contract workers as well or only on roll employees. We may wish to await further clarification in this regard from the ministry because this is something which is clearly not coming out from the order in its current form. So uh, with the 50% strength, uh, currently there is no clarity on this. No, and uh, just to just to clarify, the strength in in total has to be fifty percent. So if you're planning to use contract workers, you cannot use that as a reason to go up to eighty percent or ninety percent. You cannot say fifty percent of my employee uh, of my employees, and then I have got you know another two hundred contract workers, and that's not covered. Uh, that will definitely violate the spirit of the MHA order, and will not be. Uh, appreciate it. It will definitely fall foul of the requirements that have been set. Uh, so both for this sector as well as for IT, ITS, where there is uh, there are specific uh, you know restrictions on the on, on the percentage of employees, it is best to assume it is safer to assume that this includes both contract workers as well as employees. Indranil, uh, precisely right because uh, this would also defeat the whole purpose of social distancing because that's the objective with which lesser workforce is being encouraged to come in once we are exiting in a phase-wise manner from the lockdown. So that, perce that uh, perception and that uh, point that you made is definitely in the right line and the manner in which this MHA order has been designed. So definitely that's the right step that you should ensure that social distancing at all levels need to be mentioned and therefore lesser strength is being brought back into the workforce. Uh, with that, we can move to the next question, uh, Zahir, if you can take it up. Yes, Sandra. The next question is, uh, it came from an, uh, one of our clients who is an NBFC. So they wanted to know uh, which offices and in which, uh, in which states basically they are allowed to operate their offices. Uh, to answer this, uh, yes, Zahir, uh, can I... Uh, can I intervene at this stage right now? Yeah, because please. as uh, 
uh, you know, so just to clarify, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, this is a session that we are recording a couple of hours in advance to avoid the technical glitches that are potentially likely to happen. And as we were recording this session, there is this new uh, amendment which has happened to the Ministry of Home Affairs order, which, uh, in which says that in the finance sector, non-banking finance institutions, including uh, housing finance companies and microfinance institutions with bare minimum staff and cooperative credit societies uh, will be added to the list and they will be exempted. Oh. Uh, so the response needs to be modified now to, to clarify that. That and and we will uh, you know get into the uh, into the details of that amendment because there are a few other things which have been included. For example, collection, harvesting, and processing of minor forest products and non-timber forest uh, produced by scheduled tribes and other forest dwellers has been added. Bamboo, coconut, uh, aracant, coca, spices, plantation, uh, which were earlier only restricted to rubber, tea, and coffee, have also been added. Uh, construction activities in rural areas include water supply and sanitation. Uh, laying erection of power transmission lines and telecom optical fibers. This has been clarified. So there are a series of clarifications which have come through the, the amendment which has recently uh, come into the public domain. Uh, I wanted to make the point because, uh, you know, it is important that we, we establish that we are aware of this and, and, and we are looking at it and we will obviously uh, do a deeper research in this onto the specific amendment and come back with uh, more detailed feedback. So people who are uh, com risk users should uh, should keep an eye out for updates that we send you uh, for all our other uh, you know covid-19 package users you will see a summary of this in the covid-19 package on our website as well as also the mobile application in, in a short while after this webinar is over so i just wanted to make that point zahir uh, uh, over to you i think that broadly yeah, answers yeah yeah thanks thanks it actually yeah, so answers, that answers this question yeah. with regard to NBFCs with many states. Uh, so the clarification issued, so the uh, MH, the Maharashtra order, which we thought had actually diluted the MHA order with regard to NBFCs, has now become the norm. Yes. Uh, however, there are some restrictions in terms of the number of people uh, who can operate, uh, which you will, uh, you know, if you look at the amendment or if you wait for our update, you will find out. Uh, uh, but but otherwise, yes, NBFCs, uh, including housing finance corporations, will be able to operate from Monday. Thank you. Thank you very much, Indranil. Uh, Antara? Yeah. We can so the on. next question that, yeah, so the, uh, we can uh, see the slide. The next question is that for transport of employees, does it have to be a company-owned car or can we use rental cars or employees' cars? Do I need to get a police curfew pass for this? What are guidelines towards employee commuting to office? Mainly those commuting by public transportation. Okay, so a couple of questions which we, as you can see, we've tried to uh, merge them together because they all are around a common point. Uh, so we would like to mention that uh, as covered by us earlier in this session as well, under the MHA 15 order, all buses meant for public transport, metro rail services and taxis including auto rickshaw, cycle rickshaw and cab aggregators, uh, which is mostly used by the workforce, have been prohibited from operating in the prevailing period of lockdown up to 3rd May 2020. So on the one side, there's a whole bunch of public transport which is being prohibited. And on the other side, certain industries subject to not being in containment zones or hotspots are being allowed to get back to work. So let's see how we can address this query. So as an employer of an establishment which is allowed to continue operations during the period of lockdown, since public transport will still remain prohibited, it is implied that you would be required to provide a company, uh, a company transportation facility for your workers. Further, while arranging the transportation, uh, you must bear in mind that the vehicle will be allowed to work only with 30 or 40 percent of the passenger capacity given the social distancing norms that you will be obliged to follow and when these vehicles enter your premises they have to be mandatorily disinfected by spray there has to be cleansed there has to be a huge amount of hygiene being maintained and your employees must be wearing masks so these are the typical guidelines which we have noticed in the sop uh, for the movement of your vehicle carrying your employees in the state you may have to obtain passes from the local authority, from the local police, which the state governments will inform from time to time and as they have in the previous period of lockdown as well. 
state governments have come up with processes to issue the passes for instance the government of haryana in a notification dated 27th march had launched a system of granting movement passes electronically for both the government employees as well as the public persons who have emergency situations like say a situation of medical emergency or you have a fatality or you need to go to a crematorium ground so for these situations the public people were allowed to use their private vehicles and where they needed to travel despite the strict lockdown so they were compelled in those scenarios they need to but to join back to work the company provided transportation would be required at least till further clarity is received that if private uh, cars can operate for the purpose of joining back work we have also noticed an interesting um, update from chatisgarh government where they had launched a uh, chatisgarh covid 19 e pass which is an android uh, app to facilitate issuance of vehicle passes for inter and intra district movement of vehicles during the lockdown in chatisgarh state uh, please note that there cannot be any inward and outward movement of population of the hotspots and containment zones which we want to reemphasize constantly that that is the condition basis which this exemption needs to be implemented that is the first point that you need to satisfy is that is your organization is not in a hotspot or the containment zones that number one secondly uh, to the question that yes uh, you have to keep a note of these curfew passes the police orders which states are issuing from time to time uh, depending on the geographical location out of which you operate this is important for you to bear in mind uh, in the just, uh, yeah. yeah just a quick point that you know there is a specific uh, uh, restriction or a, uh, the the continuation of the lockdown with regard to all forms of public transport which includes rental vehicles and app cabs so while uh, you know there is nothing which specifically restricts the use of uh, you know rental vehicles it might be difficult to get them because they have not been uh, uh, exempted uh, unlike some of these other industries as a part of the so so the rental car uh, companies especially the structured uh, well organized larger rental car companies might be uh, you know uh, worried about uh, sh you know sending their cars because there is no specific exemption that that industry has been provided as a matter of fact uh it has been quite clearly stated that uh, especially for uh, for uh, taxis and for app cabs they will not be able to operate uh, uh, for the moment so so that might come in the way of getting rental cars during this period yes absolutely uh, that that is absolutely right um so i think we need to take note of these things that what remains prohibited so in on one side as i earlier mentioned that we are allowing the exemptions at the other side there are going to be difficulties for companies to organize and arrange for transportation facilities so these logistics need to also be in place in order to action and getting back to work for the permitted industry uh, with this uh, for the rest of the questions we will uh, move it to zahir thanks antra uh, the next question which we are going to address here is uh, this client of ours write to us saying that we used to manufacture non essential items now we want to manufacture essential items what are the conditions for us to continue operations now uh, there is no direct provision which allows or disallows an organization from starting to manufacture essential goods under the mha order now then if somebody wants to switch over to manufacturing essential goods there is no such clarity which is either prohibiting or allowing or disallowing uh, such a uh, switch over now to manufacture essential goods in addition to comply if you are doing it within this period within this uh, gap in addition to complying with the hygiene social distancing and requirements listed under annexures 1 and 2 of the mha order you may have to assess whether your existing permissions under various other laws uh, are in place for example under factories act Uh, environment protection act mem your memorandum of association etc so all laws by and large they require uh, a notification to be sent to the regulating authority in case you especially with uh, operations laws like factories act boilers act and environmental laws in case there is a change of uh, pattern of operations or the things you manufacture there is a notification which is required to uh, be submitted before such authorities who have granted you the permissions but it is absolutely possible to do it because as you would know in uh, several organizations including some of our clients 
have started, uh, you know, manufacture, for example, of ventilators and things like that during this period. And they have uh, uh, sought and received necessary approval so that they can do that business, uh, keeping the, the nature of what is required at this moment. Yeah, yes, engineering. Moving on, uh, yeah, I'll move on with the next question. And now, again, a very uh, absolutely justified question, especially in the light of uh, the guidelines which have been laid down in Annexure, which makes uh, mandatory insurance of all workers. Uh, now, the question is what is the amount of medical insurance I have to offer uh, my employees or workers? If I already have them insured, do I need to have any additional policy? Now, the MHA order does not specifically mention any amount up to which or for which the insurance cover has to be obtained. Now, we anticipate some standard practices, including the amounts as well, uh, which will evolve in the coming days. Post consultations between uh, organizations and insurance companies and IRD and government maybe. Now, at this stage, you should uh, take the best possible health insurance policy, keeping in mind the intent of the requirement is what we can say. Now, standard practice in your industry, if your industry are like example, uh, someone working in the healthcare who is more likely to come on contact with the COVID-19 virus or patients uh, infected with it should have more comprehensive policy. As against someone working in IT, ITES uh, research firm operating uh, will not require interaction with other persons. Now, if you have a health policy, the second part of the question, uh, now if you have a, already have a health policy for the employees, which covers for hospital, hospitalization, treatment, etc. Now for COVID-19 uh, related illness uh, also, then there is no need to get additional policies, what we can say as of now. And there is nothing which, which is clarified. So it doesn't even need to technically be a group insurance. Uh, as yeah. long as every employee of the company has a provide a medical insurance and the you know considering that it says that the employer has to provide the medical insurance as long as the employer is paying for the the premium for that health insurance that should be enough from the point of view of this particular order uh, needless to say uh, with insurance companies also being allowed to operate from the 20th uh, if you already do not have a health insurance for your employees, it might take you a few days to be able to actually obtain it. Our recommendation would be to not start your operations till it has been obtained for the same reasons that we've already mentioned about right. uh, being fully prepared before before operations actually begin. Right, right. Okay, then uh, moving on uh, with the next question. Now, this is with regard to uh, the payment of overtime to employees or contract laborers. Now, how? what are the guidelines for making payment to employees or contract laborers for making them work overtime during this period? Now, the MHA order is silent on making payment for overtime uh, per se to direct or indirect employees and workers, including the ones which are hired through contractors. Now, the process and law, we would say, like to say, remains the same. The liability is ultimately on the uh, principal employer to make a necessary payment when it comes to uh, contract labor. Of course, for direct employees, it continues to be the employer. Now, in the absence of any guidance under the MHA order, uh, it is, uh, we can rightfully say that the existing laws will govern the aspect of payment with regard to overtime work as well and, and regular payments. Now, we, we recognize that employees or contractors who were uh, being paid in cash till now and who have not been able to migrate the employers who have not been able to migrate to an online payment mechanism uh, will be this will be a big bigger practical problem to resolve and therefore our recommendation is like uh, for employers who have uh, not been paying uh, still continuing to pay in cash until now they should make all uh, their uh, all efforts to enable the employees to move to digital banking uh, etc to accept the payments which you are going to make to them. That is something which we highly recommend for you. Yes, and uh, you know, the, 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 as far as the overtime is concerned, uh, it, it becomes a little tricky, especially for uh, people working from home. To keep track of exactly how much time they've spent on work becomes difficult. Uh, and therefore it might be a little more uh, uh, you know, uh, difficult to determine what will be the right overtime to be paid. 
uh, as a matter of fact, even marking attendance and things like that has become difficult for many of these uh, organizations where a large majority of the yeah. people are working from home. Uh, so so, so the, some of these questions, I'm sure, will be relooked uh, by the various labor laws once uh, this current state of, uh, you know, uh, pa the pandemic state moves away and we move into the post-COVID-19 scenario. I'm sure the, 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 the labor codes which are currently uh, being finalized will consider some of these aspects when they when they review the, uh, them from a, for, before they finally uh, uh, pass by the parliament. Yeah, back to you, Zahid. Yeah, thanks, Indranil. Uh, so moving on to the probably the last question and this of this session. So uh, again, last question, uh, but but because only because we have combined many questions together, and I'm sure our clients listening to this webinar will be able able to relate to them. Uh, the last one is uh, it came from a client of ours, uh, which uh, is into manufacturing or supply chain activity of essential goods. So basically, uh, para 13.1 of the MHA order, it exempts all types of activities which are related to uh, essential goods. Whereas, if you go on in the MHA order, para 15.4, it exempts food processing industry in rural areas only that means in municipalities or municipal corporation areas food processing industries cannot be run so this client uh, under uh, going through these two paragraphs asks us a question now uh, they are a food processing unit engaged in manufacture of essential food products uh, with manufacturing facilities not in rural but municipal area their question is simple will they be allowed or disallowed under the provisions of para 15.4 now clause 13 1 of msa uh, order allows exemption to all types of activities related to food processing of essential goods so if you are doing any sort of food processing which is under the essential goods category now irrespective of whether you are manufacturing and from which location becomes irrelevant Clause 15.4 is basically applicable to food processing industries which are not covered as essential goods. Now for them, you have to restrict your operations in rural areas only and not carry on your operations in municipal corporation or municipalities. So that is the gist of it. So if we both are uh, both the clauses 13.1 and 15.4 are read in conjunction that's what comes out of it so uh, that food processing industry for essential goods can be done from pretty much anywhere subject to of course uh, strict compliance with all the conditions that we talked about and which are there in uh, laid down in the mhe order now uh, otherwise if you are into a food processing industry which are not covered under essential goods then your restriction then your operations must be restricted to rural areas only Engineer, would you like to add anything to that? Uh, not specifically to this, but uh, I would like to conclude the session by, first of all, of course, thanking uh, all of you. I know that uh, uh, one of the people I had not introduced uh, in the session uh, also uh, intervened with a very important point, and that is one of our co-founders and, again, an extremely experienced lawyer, Siddharth Singh, who is also a part of this webinar series. Uh, and, uh, you know, as far as the webinar recording is concerned as i have already clarified we have recorded this slightly ahead of the actual uh, presentation because of uh, technical challenges that we are facing because we are all recording from our respective homes and we did not want to take the ch uh, take a chance on recording this live uh, as we were recording the latest amendment to the ministry of home affairs order has come up we have already clarified that there is uh, uh, there are some additional exemptions that have been provided in the financial sector as well as in some areas like plantation uh, uh, for a more detailed summary do look out for our updates uh, we will continue to do more such sessions as we progress through this period of pandemic we will also keep giving you updates with regard to uh, the covid 19 situation through the covid 19 package which is now part of both our explosion uh, website as well as for more specific application to individual clients as a part of, uh, of com risk uh, as we have already mentioned both the covid 19 package for non com risk users as well as for the covid 19 package and the rest of uh, com risk is now available both on ios and android 
it even has facilities like push notifications so you can get these updates if you if you enable notifications on an ongoing basis uh, we understand the kind of stress that many of you are feeling with regard to uh, the evolving situation and and how it Im impacts yours in your businesses and you individually uh, we we can give you a reasonable assurance that if you keep track of the covid-19 package you will have a, a, a fair idea of what's happening uh, currently and will give you a uh, 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 some kind of a heads up on what it will be like over the next few uh, you know weeks and probably months uh, as a complete aside before we uh, before we lo log off while we were uh, working on various other aspects like these regulatory up uh, updates like improving com risk like adding the the so some features to the mobile application we have also launched uh, a new uh, you know application for uh, primarily for our clients uh, uh, and this is a in-house legal collaboration tool called LexCollab. Uh, it is being offered for free for the first 60 days uh, for you to play with and give us suggestions so that we can improve it. It's a tool that we originally built for one of our large uh, manufacturing clients and uh, uh, we licensed it to them for uh, for use and basis their feedback and how how happy they are with it. We have decided to now take it to the market. We're taking this opportunity of bringing it up so that any of you who are interested can reach out to your project managers and relationship managers for Lexplosion. This is exclusively for Lexplosion uh, uh, clients. If any of you want to uh, do a free trial of Lex Collab, do let your project managers and relationship managers know and we will gladly give you a access which you can then use to, uh, to, to do that. Uh, for any of our other products and solutions or for any other information with regard to Lexplosion, do visit our uh, website which is www.lexplosion.in. Uh, we can already see that a number of questions have come in uh, through the session and we have tried to respond to as many of them as possible through the chat screen. Uh, we will be uh, collating all these questions and creating uh, responses uh, as, we, uh, as we have done in the past and we'll be sharing those responses both with the individuals who have asked those questions as well with the larger audience. The presentation that has been uh, shared uh, will already be available for download uh, as a part of the webinar. Uh, for any other questions, do reach out to us. We are all available. We are working from home and we will continue to work from home for the moment, but we are fully operational from all, our, uh, from all aspects, our legal, our technical, uh, our technology team, our support team, our company secretaries, chartered accountants, the entire organization is working probably at higher productivity than ever before at this moment. So we'd be very happy to take any support that uh, provide you any support that you might need during this time. Thank you once again for joining this session. We really, really appreciate the time that you have spared for it uh, and for especially for our clients for providing us with this valuable inputs and questions which had only helped us improve this session for everybody's benefit. Thank you once again. We will do another session like this very shortly. Thank you very much.